JLG Industries presents LiftPod Operator Safety. This video will show you the recommended operation of your JLG LiftPod. By viewing this video, you are accepting responsibility for the safe and proper operation of your machine and for complying with all applicable laws and regulations covering its proper use. This video is intended to serve as a supplement to your operator's manual located in the manual storage holder on the platform. This document must be kept with the machine and if not available, must be obtained by contacting your local JLG distributor or at jlg.com. Before operating your machine, verify that you are using the proper personal protective equipment. While local regulations may not require the use of approved fall protection devices, JLG recommends that personnel use an approved fall restraint device with a lanyard attached to the authorized lanyard anchorage point while operating this machine. The maximum allowable lanyard length for the JLG lift pod is 91 centimeters or 36 inches. The lift pod is not approved for use with a fall arrest device. You are responsible for wearing the required personal protective equipment as it applies to your work. The lift pod is a user assembled machine. There are multiple parts that need to be assembled for operation for the FT70 and the FT140. The base frame and frame counterweight, the mast mount, the FT70 mast assembly, the FT140 mast assembly, the platform, the power pack control unit, tool tray. To assemble the machine, follow these steps. Position the base frame on a firm level surface. Inspect the frame counterweight or stump for any damage. After making sure nothing is under the base, including your hands or feet, push down on the base frame step plate until the swivel caster retracts and the base sits on the adjustable feet. Lock the rotating casters by just pressing the tab on the wheel. Turn the rotating knobs of the adjustable feet until the bubble in the bubble level indicator is in the center. Do not use the machine if you cannot get the base level. Grasp the mast mount using the handle slots and slide the mount into the base frame receptacle until bottomed. With the aid of an assistant on the FT140 slide, the FT140 mast assembly onto the mast stump. Make sure it is properly aligned and fully engaged. Do not force it into position. Then install the FT70 mast assembly. If assembling an FT70, just install the FT70 mast assembly onto the FT70 base. Attach the platform to the mast assembly. Align the platform mounting pins with the holes in the mast assembly. Slowly drop the platform into position so that the platform locator engages properly at the bottom of the mast assembly. And the platform latch locks the platform in position. The platform will not lift out if the latch is properly engaged. Attach the power pack control unit in the proper position. On the FT140, attach the secondary power pack. If using the tool tray, place the tray on the top rail of the platform and fasten the two straps firmly around the rails. Make sure the mast assembly is fully lowered before disassembly. Reverse these steps to disassemble the machine. Now that the machine is assembled, you must conduct a walk around inspection before each use to ensure that there is no visible damage, loose or missing parts, or excessive wear. Ensure the operator's safety, service, and maintenance manual is in the manual storage holder. This manual contains a complete inspection procedure that you must follow. Ensure overall cleanliness. Check all surfaces for leakage, debris, or foreign objects. Inspect the machine structure for dents, damage, weld, or apparent metal cracks, or other discrepancies. When doing the walk around, inspect the following parts. The wheels, the base frame, the manual descent crank, the swivel caster mechanism and adjustable feet, the carriage frame counterweight, the mast assembly or assemblies, the power pack control units,
the platform assembly and gate. The tool tray. Check all decals and placards for cleanliness and legibility. Make sure that none are missing and that all illegible decals and placards are cleaned or replaced. Ensure that all periodic inspections and maintenance have been completed as outlined in the operations manual. Check the machine for modifications to original components. Verify that any modifications have been approved by JLG. After completing the walk around inspection, you must now conduct a functional check of all systems. Start each day with a fully charged battery. Position the machine on a firm level surface in an area free of overhead and ground level obstructions. On the FT-70, step on the base to ensure the swivel caster retracts properly. Make sure the feet are properly adjusted to level the base. Ensure the swivel caster wheels lock both the wheel and the rotation of the caster. Prior to operation, read, understand, and obey all danger, warning, and caution placards and operating instructions on the machine and in the manual. Do not operate the machine until you have done so. Attach one end of your lanyard to the lanyard anchorage point, located at the bottom right side of the platform. Use extreme caution when entering or leaving the platform. Ensure the platform is fully lowered. Always face the machine and use the three-point contact method when entering or leaving the platform. The three-point contact method means that two hands and one foot or one hand and two feet are in contact with the machine at all times while entering or leaving the platform. The maximum rated capacity is displayed at the platform and in the operator's manual. The 150 kilogram or 330 pound capacity includes the weight of the operator, tools, equipment, and other items in the platform. Never exceed the rated capacity. Now complete a functional check of the machine. Drill. To use the drill, insert 3 8 inch hex into drill chuck. Attach a lanyard to drill handle. Place the hex in drive socket, select direction, Push drill down to release socket safety interlock. Squeeze trigger to activate function. There is a manual hand crank system that can be used to lower the platform. To operate the manual descent system while in the platform, remove the power pack or drill. Locate the manual descent crank and attach it to the upper drive shaft. Push down to disengage the drive shaft lock and wind counterclockwise to lower the platform. If using the optional power pack unit, twist to release the emergency stop switch, depress the enable switch, and the lift up switch. To lower the platform, depress the enable switch and the lift down switch. The enable switch and lift up or down switch must be continuously activated to elevate or lower the platform. Ensure the lift up and down functions operate properly. Raise and lower each mass several times. Check for smooth operation. When elevating, the platform will automatically stop moving when the maximum height is reached or when the enable and or function switches are released. Ensure the emergency stop switch is functioning properly. All machine functions will be disabled when depressed. Before lowering the platform, always check the area below the platform to make sure it is clear. Always lower the platform to the fully lowered position before exiting the platform. If at any time during the functional check you discover any damage or discrepancies, or if the machine does not operate properly, turn the machine off immediately. Report the problem to the proper maintenance personnel. Do not operate the machine until it is deemed safe for operation. Now that the machine is ready for operation, some general safety precautions must be followed during operation. Do not operate any machine on which the decals or placards are missing or illegible. Keep in mind that your machine is not insulated and does not provide protection from contact or proximity to electrical current. Follow the minimum rated approach distance as outlined in the operator's manual. Maintain a safe distance of at least 3 meters or 10 feet between any part of the machine, its occupants and their tools and equipment from electrical lines, apparatus, or any energized parts carrying up to 50,000 volts, exposed or insulated. One foot additional clearance is required for every additional 30,000 volts or less. 
allow for machine movement and electrical line swaying. This requirement shall apply except when employer, local, or government regulations are more stringent. This machine is designed for use on firm level surfaces. Do not elevate the platform while on a slope or on a soft or uneven surface. The user must be familiar with the operating surface. Keep the base of the machine a minimum of 0.6 meters or 2 feet from holes, bumps, drop-offs, obstructions, debris, concealed holes, and other potential hazards at the ground level. Do not perform work that will subject the machine to a horizontal force or create a swaying motion of the platform. Warn personnel not to work, stand, or walk under a raised platform. Position barricades as necessary. Ensure that operators of other overhead and floor level machines are aware of the lift's presence. Disconnect power to overhead cranes. During operation, keep all body parts inside the platform railings. Keep both feet firmly positioned on the platform floor at all times. Never use ladders, boxes, steps, planks, or similar items on a platform to provide additional reach. Exercise extreme caution at all times to prevent obstacles from striking or interfering with the operating controls or the person in the platform. Always ensure that the power tools are properly stowed and never left hanging by their cord from the platform work area. Do not carry materials directly on the platform railing. Avoid any buildup of debris on the platform floor. Keep mud, oil, grease, and other slippery substances from your footwear and platform floor. Do not increase the platform size with unauthorized extensions or attachments. Increasing the area exposed to wind will decrease stability. Never attempt to use the machine as a crane. Do not tie off the machine to any adjacent structure. Do not operate or raise the platform while on trucks, trailers, railway cars, floating vessels, scaffolds, or other equipment unless approved in writing by JLG. After you are done operating your machine, you must properly shut it down. Always ensure the platform is fully lowered before disassembling or transporting. When lowering, ensure the machine reaches its lower limit and push in the emergency stop button. Remove all tools and debris. The machine may be moved when fully assembled. It can be pushed on the swivel caster for transport. Only move the machine on a smooth, level, clean, and dry surface. Never allow personnel on the platform while moving the machine. When transporting by truck or trailer, the machine must be disassembled into its major components. Secure each component separately. Refer to the operator's manual for additional information. After each use, you should charge the battery. The operator's manual provides a procedure for charging the battery. Always charge in a well-ventilated area. The battery can be charged daily without concern for overcharging and damaging the battery. Never store the battery on a charger unless charging. This section contains troubleshooting information to be used for locating and correcting some of the operational problems that may develop in the machine. In case of the loss of battery power or the inability of the operator to lower the platform, there is a manual descent system that can be used to lower the platform. To operate the manual descent system from the ground, locate the manual descent crank in the frame and attach it to the upper drive shaft. Insert the hex end of the manual descent crank into the hex socket located at the top of the mast. Crank counterclockwise to lower the platform. For more troubleshooting tips, please refer to your operator's manual. It is important to complete your work safely using your JLG lift pod. You are responsible for complying with all applicable laws and regulations. This video must be used in conjunction with the operator's manual. If you require further clarification on the safe operation of your machine, contact JLG Product Safety and Reliability at 877-JLG-SAFE or 1-717-485-6591. Six five nine one. If outside of the United States, thank you for making JLG your provider of choice for your elevated access needs.